So I thought today I'm just taking you out here in the beautiful park that is behind our house and I want to talk to you about how we got out of debt in one day. Let's do this. Hey ihr Lieben, it's Yash here, yashobrighton.com If you're new here to this channel, I want to welcome you. This channel is all about me trying to help you grow in faith, experience the gospel and walk it out daily. So, welcome to the channel, welcome to this video. As you see, I'm out here in the park, taking you along with me, trying to do it a little bit of vlog style today. And um, I want to start off the video with a little bit of a story time. So I got to start a little bit from the beginning all the way when we came over here to America. As you know, I'm a German. When my wife and I got married, we actually used to live in Germany. Then we traveled over here. We moved over here to Florida. And life here is just so different than Germany. People here use their money differently, spend their money differently. And the whole like system, how money is being utilized and money is being treated as different. The mindset is different. So for example, here people use their money in this way. <laughs> they, they buy something they actually cannot afford usually. For example, a car for whatever, 20, 30,000 and then just make payments. Which of course Germans do that too. But they're a little bit more conservative. At least my upbringing was more conservative. Now I have to say that, of course, there are conservatives here as well. I uh, pretty fast found Dave Ramsey on YouTube. You should uh, look him up. He's like a Christian financial guru. And um, I learned a lot of him. So when we came here, we very fast got into this kind of like pay stuff off kind of thing. We got a house which was a huge blessing of God. We got a car, a huge blessing of God. We got several other things that we just had to pay off or had to pay very quickly um, because we were just starting out, right? We were having a new house. We needed stuff for the house. So very fast we were literally in debt. So before I give you all those super wise advices of mine <laughs> it can be that they all didn't even have an influence on what happened and maybe it was just jesus saying you know what i love you here you go here are some of my thoughts that i think could be helpful at least to tackle that issue of debt first of all i want to tell you god has your back if you are faithful to god he will be faithful to you first of all that's generally being obedient and faithful to god but Maybe also in the individual momentary obedience that you're supposed to be in, that God told you or shown you that you're supposed to be in right now. So very early we made payments, we tried to pay off one thing after another using that dead snowball of Dave Ramsey. And we were pretty successful, but it was like we got out of one thing and boom, something else happened in the life that we had to pay like, I don't know, a thousand or two thousand dollars here and then another five hundred there and we had some medical bills and this and that and the other. Guys, life in America is just so different than in Germany concerning money. Like in Germany, I was used to going to the doctor just showing my insurance card and everything or almost everything was covered. Here, you gotta really be worried if you have to go to the ER for like even a little boo-boo, right? You just have to pay so much, which is crazy. However, I had to get used to this. And we paid off one thing after another, right? So this was really working. God was blessing us. The second thing would be to pay your tithes and offerings. I believe, I strongly believe, that we're supposed to give our tithes to God. Now I know this is an iffy topic. Some churches and preachers say you are not supposed to give your tithes. Some say, say you are supposed to. I do believe you're supposed to. I'm not going to give you a Bible to study about that now. That might be a video for another day. But one thing is true that God loves a cheerful giver, right? The Bible also says whatever you sow, you will reap. So why not sowing into the kingdom of God? And I would say that you really have to be watchful or prayerful at least where you give your tithes and offerings to. Of course you should give to your local church, but I would suggest that you really give into a ministry 
that does the full gospel. You guys let me know in the comment section below what are your tips to get out of debt. What are the steps you take or you did take or you are taking right now to get out of debt. Let me know in the comment section below. So a few weeks ago I was so happy that we only had one thing left to pay off and then this fundraiser comes along at work for and with our students and uh, of course I thought well I want to bless them right so I gave them my car <laughs> to wash and they tried to wash it and they had the, the best of hearts right they, their intentions were good they tried to help me to bless me and clean it well here's the result bless their heart they had the best intentions they just completely scratched my car <laughs> the damage of eighteen hundred dollars but thankfully we have insurance and a deductible of only 500 which only is in quotation please first thing of the testimony is that I did not get angry I was shocked but was not angry I just tried to figure it out so I was thinking about it, you know, how we could do this practically. I was even thinking about how I should deal with them. If I should make them pay everything or, you know, what I should do. So I was actually praying about a little bit something else. But then God gave me this scripture. In Psalm 46 verse 10 it says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. So again, I was not angry. I wasn't even worried or anything. Really, it was just quiet before the Lord, just trusting Him. And I tell you, I kid you not, just a few hours later, we had a meeting out of the blue. Now, another thing that could maybe polarize right now is breaking poverty and lack curses. I want to make an example. And that is an example that I watched in my own life happening. You get out of debt, you make a headway, and then all of a sudden, boom, something else comes and the enemy throws another bill at your, your head. Or you get a blessing and boom, something else happens. You feel like you move a step forward and then all of a sudden, you move two back. And a step forward and you feel like you move two back. And it might be that spiritually you're in like a cycle, in almost like a curseful loop, that the enemy has a right to attack your wallet, your spiritual wallet, or even your physical wallet. I'm not sure how to explain it, but if you look at Bible verses like these, I will list them up here in the screen right now. If you look there, there are a couple of poverty curses that God, you know, really put out there that we, in Jesus, can break and get free of. We had a meeting out of the blue. I didn't force anything, we didn't force anything. Within seconds, just all our debt was just, boom, rearranged. We did pay them off, or we are still paying them off, but we made an arrangement that we are not in debt anymore. So that was like the first step, like boom, got providing. All right, I have to clarify, we're not released out of debt in that sense that they were just, you know, forgiven. God made it possible in provision that we were able to just pay them right there and then, kind of. If that makes sense. I don't want to go too much in detail about this, but got provided in a like awesome way. So here I am having those youth in front of me. Now in the light of the cross and what Jesus did for me, for us, how can I still keep them in this dead? Thought, hey, in this moment, within a few minutes, God practically released me, forgave me all the sin or the, the debt. So I thought, hey, freely I have received really I give so I forgave them I'll just release them but here's the kicker it wasn't over yet now another thing is that you really entrust and surrender all your finances to Jesus what I mean by that is that you completely repent and give up the love for money and that is for poor and rich people alike it doesn't matter see it does not mean that a rich person necessarily has a love for money I actually have seen a lot of love love for money in poor people as well where it is all about oh we need to pay this we need to pay that and you all you look is for money 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 and worry 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 that's another thing get rid of your worries Jesus himself said that God will provide if he provides for all the animals all the birds out there in the field how much more will he provide for you and the Bible also says 
seek him, seek his kingdom first and his righteousness and all these things, talking about provision, will be added unto you. It wasn't too long after that, we got another financial blessing and then just a week later, we got another financial blessing where God just showered us, where I'm like, Lord, you're just looking out for us and I'm just so thankful. Now those are a few steps that I took to get out of debt, to get us free. Next to using the advice of Dave Ramsey, using those um, financial snowballs and really being watchful what you spend. I believe that we are supposed to be good stewards, especially of our money because that's just what this world runs with, right? You can't get fruit, you can't get bread, you can't get milk or water even without spending money. So God is providing that and we are supposed to be good stewards of the things that he provides. Therefore I believe that it's not just a spiritual thing. It can be and it, it probably has all a spiritual root. Nothing happens in the physical realm or is manifested in the physical realm if it is not decided and prepared in the spiritual first. So I believe that you really also, also next to the spiritual side, you also have to get the physical side ready by not overspending but only spending at least what you have or in best case below. You want to budget, see what is going in, what is going out, and that therefore you give every dollar a mission. But that's going too far. I'm not a financial advisor or any sort of that. This is just my story, our story, how God moved in our life and how I believe God can move in your life. And that's why I would like to pray for you right now for freedom, for God to move uh, even in financial struggles. I believe that God has a solution for every moment and every situation. Jesus, I pray right now for every person listening, for every person watching this video. Holy Spirit, I ask you that you would move right now in power. I ask you that you would reveal the areas that you want to touch, maybe to bring into light where you want to free people, maybe even of the, the love for money or where people need to really repent and step back and spend less. Lord, I ask you that you would bring just if that makes sense, Lord, financial wisdom, Holy Spirit, and the authority of Jesus Christ, and in the name of Jesus Christ, I come against the devourer. I command the devourer to leave right now in Jesus' name. God, I thank you for deliverance. I command any spirit that tries to attack the finances, to bring even more financial burden, to leave in Jesus' name. I break the power of the enemy right now and I release God's provision. God, I thank you for a new vision on the right things, on the things of God. God, I thank you that when we put you first, you put us first and you really just take care. God, I, I thank you and I worship you. God, as it says, you shall be exalted in the nations through this video. You shall be exalted in the earth through this testimony that you build up. God, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. And I worship you. I lift you up, God. And I bless every watcher in Jesus' name. Alright, guys. Always remember, share this video and the gospel with a friend. See you in the next one.